Chapter 13 The rest of the day was a blur. I couldn't get that dummy's whispered words out of my mind. I was desperate to tell Molly about it, but she was away all day on some kind of science field trip. I phoned her after school, but she couldn't talk. She was going to visit some cousins in the next town over. She didn't call me back until late that night. I was pulling on my nightshirt and getting ready for bed when my cell phone rang. She started talking before I even answered. Molly, what's wrong? I asked. She sounded totally freaked. Brittany, hurry, she said. You've got to help me. We have to bury it. Huh? Molly, what are you talking about? I whispered. I'm not allowed to talk on the phone so late at night. The doll, Molly said breathlessly. That awful thing with the shrunken head. I can't leave it in the house. Please, come over. I need your help. But it's after 11, I whispered. If I get caught, Brittany, this is life or death, Molly said. I'm not joking. I need you. I'll get dressed, I said. I'll sneak out the back door. Give me two minutes. Two minutes later, I was running through backyards and across the street to Molly's house. The grass was slippery and wet due to the weather. I lowered my head against the strong gusts of wind. Molly's house was dark, except for a light in the attic window. But she stood waiting for me at the back door. She grabbed my arm and pulled me into the kitchen. She had already pulled on a yellow rain slicker and had the hood lowered over her head. We have to hurry, she whispered. Molly, I... I don't understand, I said. Tell me, what's up with that doll? She brushed back the rain hood. I could see the fear in her eyes. The mind stealer. My dad. He was wrong. We have to bury it. In a graveyard. I narrowed my eyes at her. You're not joking? Where's your dad? On an island somewhere, she said. Near Australia, I think. I tried to call him. I don't think his cell is working. But why do we have to bury that doll? That's just crazy, isn't it? A man called me, Molly said. A few minutes ago, from Mumba, he said my dad asked him for information about the Mind Stealer doll, and, and, Molly, what did he say? I asked. He said he did research for my dad. He talked to people in Mumba. The doll's powers are deadly strong. It shouldn't be kept in the house. My dad didn't know. It has to be buried in a graveyard. I stared at her. He was serious? Very serious, Molly said. He said to get the doll out of the house tonight. He said maybe it's all just an old legend, but we shouldn't take chances. It's too dangerous. She grabbed my hand. You've got to help me, Britt. I'm really scared. I knew that doll was trouble. My dad, he... Sometimes... He just doesn't take things seriously. What about Margie? I asked. Your housekeeper. Can she help us? She has the flu, Molly replied. I can't ask her to come out. Molly stared at the glass case in fear. I'll carry the doll case, she shivered. There's a shovel in the garage. You can carry that. And that's how Molly and I ended up in the little graveyard three blocks away from our houses. Nearly midnight, the neighborhood dark. No cars in the street, no moon in the cloud-covered sky. Cold raindrops pattering down on us. There we were, taking turns shoveling up the hard dirt. Inside the glass case, the evil doll stared up at us with its empty eye sockets in its shriveled green head. The wind howled. The old gravestones creaked and groaned. 
Could we get the evil doll buried before it did something horrible to us? Could it get any scarier? Yes. The hole was at least two feet deep. Almost deep enough. I dug the shovel blade into the dirt. And that's when the old gravestone across from me tilted forward. I saw crumbling dirt at the bottom of the stone. And then I saw the pale hand reach out from behind it. Too late. I saw it too late to escape its grip. It grabbed me around the ankle, wrapped its cold fingers over my skin, and I let out a shrill scream. Ethan! I gasped. What are you doing here? Made you scream, he said. He let go of my ankle, then he jumped out from behind the tombstone and did a little dance, laughing like a hyena. Molly gave him a hard shove, and he fell back against the old granite slab. You brat, she snapped. You followed us here? He grinned. You're burying that stupid doll? You're both totally mental. The rain came down harder, drumming the ground. I pretended to strangle Ethan. I'd like to bury you, I said. I know what happens at midnight, Ethan said. You both turn into pumpkins. This isn't a joke, Molly said angrily. Get away, Ethan. She shoved him again. Unless you want to help us, we have to bury this thing. It really does steal minds. Ethan giggled. You're both out of your minds already. A flash of lightning made the ugly mind stealer doll appear to move. I felt a chill roll down my back. I dug the shovel deep into the hole and scooped out another clump of dirt. I... I think it's deep enough, I said. Ethan watched as Molly and I carefully, carefully lifted the glass case. The disgusting little head rolled to one side. The doll's wooden arms bounced against the glass. Into the hole, we lowered it slowly. The glass case felt slippery and wet from the rain, but we set it down in the hole. Then we both frantically shoveled and scooped dirt over it, buried it, buried it out of sight, where its evil powers could do no damage. And then the three of us ran for home, battered by the wind and rain. Molly had a smile on her face now. At least she could feel safe again in her own house. But what about me? No way I could feel safe. Not with a living dummy turning my life into a horror show.